Good day. My name is David Wilde, and this is part two of a three-part lecture on chapter eight on strategic thinking and planning from Connect Master Management 2.0. Let's talk about the cross-functional aspect of strategic decisions. Sometimes you might hear managers use the term strategy in connection with some functional area of an organization. You might come across the terms marketing strategy, human resource strategy, financial strategy, and so on. These terms often refer to impactful or long-term decisions made in each of these areas of the business. However, such terms might also give the wrong impression that one area of the business is inherently more important than all of the others. Such terms can also confuse strategic decisions with other decisions that need to be made within one function of the business. It is helpful to define the longer-term decisions within each functional area of business. For example, within marketing, human resources, accounting, operations, defining these as functional policies is helpful. Strategic decisions made in an organization are inherently cross-functional in nature, meaning that they span marketing, manufacturing, and other functional areas. All of the functional areas of an organization need to be in sync for it to achieve its objectives. This is the essence of strategy. So, in summary on the cross-functional aspects of strategic decisions. Strategic decisions are inherently cross-functional in nature. Managers making strategic decisions therefore must consider how these decisions will influence managers involved in other parts of the organization, such as manufacturing, marketing, finance, and human resources. Strategic decisions will determine the functional policies that are appropriate for these areas. Managers need to make sure that different parts of the organization and the activities carried out in them support the various functions of the organization and have the organization working well together. So, let's next talk about the concept of strategic fit. Strategic decisions not only span functional areas, they should also integrate the firm's functional activities so that they complement one another. Strategic fit is the degree to which an organization's policies are consistent with one another and suitable for the environment in which the organization operates. Strategic decisions should not consider a certain functional area in a vacuum, but they should ensure that the firm's various activities are consistent with each other and reinforce each other. A firm cannot achieve alignment if it tries to do everything or if it undertakes incompatible activities. Harvard Business School professor Michael Porter once observed that, quote, the essence of strategy is choosing what not to do. There are two facets to strategic fit. The first, internal alignment, is achieved when the firm integrates its functional activities to take advantage of its strengths and minimizes its weaknesses. Strengths are those internal characteristics of an organization that give the firm an advantage over rivals, and weaknesses represent disadvantages. These internal factors include financial resources, such as funding and income sources, physical resources, such as location and equipment, relationships, such as those with suppliers and with alliance partners, human resources, the, the organization's employees and in volunteers that work with it, and finally, business processes, such as employee programs that it has. 
When employees across functions understand a firm's strategy and how these activities are aligned, employees can better understand how their own work affects and is affected by the work of other employees. The second dimension of fit, external alignment, considers the environment in which the firm competes. A firm's environment might represent new opportunities for growth, and the firm's strategic decisions must fit with these opportunities. External alignment is achieved when a strategic decision capitalizes on external opportunities and minimizes external threats. Strategic decisions that exploit the strengths of a company and the opportunities that it has, while minimizing the impact of its weaknesses or threats, are likely to be more profitable than others. So, in summary on strategic fit. Strategic fit exists when a decision enables a firm to leverage its strengths and mitigate its weaknesses. This is called internal alignment. At the same time, a firm needs to take advantage of opportunities while reducing the impact of potential threats to the business. This is the external alignment dimension of strategic fit. Finally, no one strategic decision is best for all firms because they each have a different set of capabilities, constraints, opportunities, and challenges. Finally, strategic decisions are those that have a long-term impact on an organization. If a manager made a decision that is short-term or could be easily reversed, then it wouldn't really have a long-term impact on the firm or expose the firm to any risk. Strategic dec decisions, therefore, require managers to carefully identify alternatives, to compare them, and then select and implement the appropriate one. When a firm makes a strategic decision like an acquisition, it loses out on the benefits of the non-chosen alternative, for example, if it enters into a partnership instead. The loss of potential benefits from the non-chosen alternative are called opportunity cost. These are indirect costs because they are, they are benefits the firm is unable to realize when it makes a decision for a certain alternative and decides against others. Even if the chosen option is positive for a firm, it is not a good decision if opportunity costs are high because the firm could have, could have obtained even higher benefits from choosing another alternative that it passed up. Managers, therefore, need to approach long-term decisions by carefully thinking through alternatives and comparing them. What are some strategic alternatives a firm might evaluate in a comparative way? Here are a few examples that are common strategic decisions that require comparative thinking and analysis, rather than simply a go, no-go approach that fails to consider the presence of opportunity cost. Examples of, of such questions are, what country should the firm expand into? Second, how should the firm enter a foreign country? Examples of foreign market entry modes include using exports, licensing, or foreign direct investment, which involves having assets located in that country. That would, that would be something to where the firm would have a wholly owned plant built from scratch or the acquisition of a firm in the foreign country. A question like, what product markets should the firm enter? Or... What product markets should it exit? Fourth, should the firm expand into a market by itself and compete with firms in that market, or should it take the approach to collaborate with them? A final type of question would be, should the firm do certain activities in-house, such as marketing, manufacturing, or research and development, or 
should it utilize the capabilities of outside organizations instead. So, in summary, in looking at the long-term nature of strategic decision-making, if it were easy for managers to make a series of short-term decisions or to reverse decisions, they would face little risk or consequence for the decisions that they do make. Many long-term decisions are hard to reverse because they have continuing consequences for the firm. For example, assets might need to be sold to others at a cost. Employees may need to be let go. New supplier relationships may be developed, and so on. Any chosen alternative does have opportunity cost, or the indirect cost equal to the foregone benefits of the decision not made. Finally, opportunity cost raise the stakes in the strategic decisions that managers make. Managers, therefore, need to identify strategic alternatives and analyze them comparatively. And this ends the second part of our three-part lecture on Chapter 8 on Strategic Thinking and Planning.